Okay, people, let's do this thing. What I want to talk about today is Gutenberg compatibility with Thesis, and then I'm going to show you a little bit about, uh, you know, within the the new Gutenberg panel, I'll show you the stuff that is going to be of interest to you and that is going to give you access to the data that you've created on your site in the uh, all the time leading up to Gutenberg being a thing. So let's dive in. Here we go. Back to our picture and picture. Whoop. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the Gutenberg editor. And if you are using Thesis, uh, let's say you've upgraded to the most current version, which is 2.7.1. If you are using Thesis and you attempted to use the Gutenberg editor, you may, may have experienced uh, an issue, uh, just a blank white screen. Instead of seeing what you're seeing here, uh, this whole top bar, everything's gone, nothing is here, literally nothing is here, it is a blank white screen. If you experience this blank white screen, the reason why is because you are also running yeah, da, 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 the cleanup WP box. Here's the boxes management panel, and you've got the cleanup WP box. So we're going to go to its settings page. Oh, so the deal is uh, we can't go to the settings page. So I just released uh, two new versions of this yesterday, actually, 1.3 and then now 1.4. Uh, version 1.4, the cleanup WP box, is now available via automatic updates in your WordPress dashboard. You need to, if you want Gutenberg compatibility, you want to get rid of that white screen, you need to update to version 1.4 of this box and then visit the settings page. So we'll go to the settings page real quick. And just updating the box should probably fix your site. Uh, the issue was this allow O embed on your content. So if this was not checked, Thesis would say, okay, let's nuke the O embed script from your site. And it nuked it on the front end which is where we wanted to get rid of it, and also on the admin side. I didn't even know this was used on the admin side at all. Uh, it doesn't really make sense to me. But the bottom line is the Gutenberg editor, not, not ready for prime time yet. Uh, there's a lot of issues with the way it is designed and the way it currently works. And so the issue is that there are some JavaScript dependencies. There's like 50 JavaScripts to get separate JavaScript files to get loaded up to run this thing. And... There are a bunch of dependencies. A dependency is says, says that like if you load this script, well, we also have to have these other scripts on which this thing is dependent or else the whole thing's not going to work. And dependencies are kind of a, a, an interesting issue in software. You don't want to have a lot of dependencies in like a core piece of software. Ideally, you have basically no dependencies. Everything's kind of an interchangeable part and then stuff can work together, but it's not reliant upon anything else because that way if one thing's not there or is broken, then everything breaks. That's not a good, that's not a very robust uh, design scenario. So anyway, basically the lack of a presence of that O embed script was causing this thing to fail. And when Gutenberg fails, if you do a search for Gutenberg white screen in Google, for example, there's gonna to be tons of results. And what you find by looking at those results is that there's a lot of different issues that led to this white screen. So the white screen doesn't actually tell you anything about the source of the underlying error. There's many different causes. But what I find interesting about this is the fact that when your failover state is a blank white screen, that's not very helpful. So that failure state is not designed properly. When Gutenberg doesn't have all the stuff it needs, it deploys a set of style classes in the HTML. I'll show you this just to for academic purposes. Oh, I hit it on the wrong thing. Here we go. So it, when it loads just by default without any uh, JavaScript telling it what to do, it has all these uh, classes. See these body classes here? Some of these, like if we get rid of is full screen mode, a couple other ones, they, they make stuff appear and disappear or like, you know, show or hide various things. And right now everything is hidden in the default state. That's just a design flaw. The des default state where nothing loads should at least load the WordPress admin, give you a way out of there, or like the, the navigation bar or something to get you the heck out of here. 
But, uh, you know, they've <laughs> the team was scrambling to get this out before WordCamp US uh, earlier this month, December of 2018. And, uh, you know, when you're rushing to get something out, when you've got an external reason, like, oh, we, we got to get this ready before WordCamp US, not an internal reason that makes sense, such as we need the software to be done before we deploy it. <laughs> uh, when you have an external reason like that, you end up with clown show problems like this. So anyway, if you experience the white screen in Gutenberg, you need to update the cleanup WP box, and that should solve your problem. Uh, if, if just doing that doesn't, select allow embed on your content, save it, and then it will work. Um, just as I've showed you here, it's, it's working fine. Now, let's, uh, now that we've got that resolved, let's jump in and look at some specifics of this editor. And uh, I just want to show you some things so you know what the landscape looks like. You have to decide how you want to use it. I'll give you some, some suggestions, armchair suggestions from here. And uh, we'll go from there. So the number one thing is that, the, so in the old editor, you had, you know, your post uh, you would, you know, write your title and then write your content over here on the left. And then you had a slew of post meta boxes on the right to publish like this one and then to, uh, to do other stuff. Now, this configuration is essentially the same as what you're used to. If we go, I need, I'm going to have to remove my beautiful face. I hate to do this. I really hate to do this. There we go. Boom. But down here at the bottom on this right side is how you can select a custom template now for a particular post or page. You click this, and then you can select whatever template you want to deploy. So that's kind of the same. It just looks a little different in a slightly different place. But now the other big item that everyone was uh, up in a tizzy about here was the was this um, post meta. So stuff like in Thesis Forever, this has been like uh, your title tag, meta description, uh, you could select schema. There's various other options down here. And I actually, in the end, really like the way the Gutenberg team ended up uh, kind of folding this in, these, these post meta boxes into the, the rest of this editor. This makes it look like a familiar landscape. To be honest, and something I didn't know, this is still using the classic editor, essentially. It's just within the context of Gutenberg. So if you look at the block itself, this is considered a classic editor block. So it's not using any of the, the Gutenberg stuff, really. It's saying this is an, uh, an old-style WordPress editor. That's how we're treating this. So you sort of have the classic editor built into Gutenberg. Even, even um, hooks and filters for the old editor still run in this environment, and I had to debug one of those. I just thought that was wild. It's like, I thought we were getting rid of this, but we're not really getting rid of this. I don't feel like that was explained very well. I think I think part of the reason it wasn't explained well is because we, the WordPress team wants to get people out of thinking about the old editor and just thinking in terms of the new one. But uh, bottom line, it's all kind of in there already. It's really not that big of a departure. And I think, you know, you can decide how you want to use it, but you don't have to treat it as this newfangled thing. You can basically continue to use this just as you, you've used the old editor. And the only downside, as I see it, is this loads a lot more JavaScript, and it's just, it's just slower and clunkier right now. Um, I don't have any insight at this time, and Alice gets any faster or better. Uh, when interfaces feel a little bit, just a little bit clunky, a little bit laggy, uh, I, I really hate using them. And that's kind of my experience so far with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gut it out for the time being and uh, see what I think. You know, like I, my, my preferred deal is just to go into uh, like code mode here. How can we do that? I forget. I messed with this yesterday. There is some way to make it look like code. Oh, code editor up here. You, you click this little three dots in the corner. You go to uh, code editor, and boom, now it's code. This is how I like to do it. This is how I actually compose literally everything. Um, I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, <laughs> but just some insight there. I, I use the actual core code. You don't have to add every little HTML tag, which is kind of the bonus of this scenario. Like I've added the additional formatting, such as a drop cap and marking some text as code. And then here's the, the more tag, 
Here's a link. You know, I add that stuff manually. I write it in there. I don't think it's that big of a drag, but some people just hate this. I get it. It's nice to use a little bit of leverage on your content, be able to use a visual editor like this. Uh, but bottom line, you still have access to all that old stuff you used to have. I don't think you really need to install the Classic Editor plugin. Uh, but yeah, obviously, if you have clients or something who, who interface with that and like don't want to have to use a thing that looks new or different, uh, you can just install the Classic Editor for them, no problem. So back to these meta boxes at the bottom. You've got everything that you had before. It's all there. I think it works. Yeah, look at that. It works. Way to go. So there you go. It's all right there. It works. Um, it is compatible with Thesis. The the reason why I sent out the email last week saying it you know wasn't yet and you needed the classic editor was because of that white screen issue. That is now resolved, and you know what to do. And hopefully you will know how to move forward with Gutenberg if that's your thing. All right. Thanks for listening. Peace.